constantly on the go, scoring the ball real well. He's a willing passer. Any game plan he needs against Wake starts with stopping that guy. And Virginia has not one, but two answers. They do. Kia Clark, you know, went after Sean Padula the other night, I thought, in that game against Virginia Tech. He'll start on Appleby, I would think. But if you're Tony Bennett, you could put Reese Beekman on him, give a little bit more length. It'll be interesting, that back and forth. Appleby this season, second in the ACC in scoring, first in assists. No player has ever led the league in both of those categories. Alondis Williams, though, almost did it last year for Wake when he won ACC Player of the Year. Officials today, Bill Covington, Clarence Armstrong, and Jeffrey Anderson. We are set for the 141st meeting all time between Wake and Virginia, and the Demon Deacons control the opening tip. And it is Clark on Appleby. The spacing for Wake Forest is outstanding. They play four around Matthew Marsh in the middle. Appleby pulls up over Clark, left it short. And it's Virginia coming out with the small lineup for a third straight game. It's an experienced group, 500 plus career combined starts. Kihei Clark has played in more games and played more minutes than any other Cavalier in program history. Franklin out to Beekman, the corner three, not there. Vanderplas with the rebound. And now Franklin open for three. The rebound comes to the big Brit, Matthew Marsh. Starting lineups for Wake. Cameron Hildreth controlling the ball. He's playing the best ball of his career. And as we say that, he turns it over. Andrew Carr, number 11 in white, coming off back-to-back double-doubles. Turnover's a problem for Wake earlier in the season. They've been much better in conference play, Anish, but you cannot turn it over against a Virginia team that is one of the best at taking care of it. Wake last time out in a win against Clemson, a Tigers team that was previously unbeaten in league play. Wake only turned it over six times in that game. Virginia last time out only turned it over five times in a win against Virginia Tech. Appleby blocked stays with it yeah. and it's our first basket he's just always on the attack he's just so tough and he's got so much freedom which i think frees his mind beekman thought about the three drives to the rim lost it it'll stay with virginia beekman a much better three-point shooter this year than his last two years we know his calling card is defense if he can become a 3 and D guy, boy, he could play for a long yeah. time. Well, they're a better shooting team overall, Anish, and, and with this lineup, they have been starting of late. They've been much better from the perimeter. Franklin misfires. Virginia has missed its first five. And you got to like the looks. You know, this has kind of been the yin, yin and the yang with Virginia. They have shot it better of late. A big part of that is Armand Franklin and Ben Vanderplas playing much better than they have all season. Clark again matched up against Tyree Appleby. Second leading scorer in the ACC. Appleby nearly traveled, gets it inside to Marsh, and a foul is called. Marsh doesn't always miss. He's only missed five times this season. Yeah, and this is the play, and this is why, to your point, Anish, I mean, he is constantly getting this shot. It's his high screen roll in the middle third of the floor. Very difficult to defend. And then you've got the massive 7-1, 250 frame of Matthew Marsh rolling to that rim. And he gets a ton of dunks. I mean, that's how you shoot that percentage. 89%, 42 out of 47 from the field. Seven foot one out of Cornwall, England. He and Hildreth, both Brits, and they have been dubbed bangers and mash by their head coach, Steve Forbes. Hildreth, Bangers, Marsh, obviously Mash. Franklin, there's Vanderplas. Vanderplas using the shot fake, and Virginia still without a point, still without a field goal. Hildreth has averaged almost 20 a game over his last four. 
Monsanto, a terrific shooter, launches and hits. He is a real wild card, a real X factor for them. That's what he does. He is a three-point sniper. 76% of his shots on the year are threes, and he's got much better off of the dribble. Clark against Appleby and Wake. Still keeping Virginia off the board. Hildreth likes to post up, working on Beekman, an excellent defender, and Beekman wins that battle. It's a good defensive stand because that's where Cam Hildreth is at his best. He's a strong driver. Nice job staying in front of the ball by Beekman. Skip pass, Beekman catch and release. And no good. Vanderplas, another offensive rebound. Fighting through a double team. And he gets Virginia on the board. First two for the Ohio transfer. He has been a massive difference maker for them in their last three games. You know, he's a shooter and has that reputation, but he's got a blue-collar vibe to him. That basket right there, a perfect example. Last three games, he's averaging more than 14 per. He started the last two. Over and back, Hildreth trying to plead his case that Virginia touched the ball. We will step aside when we come back. Chris Spatola will tell you why the calculus balance is shifting a little more to the offensive side right now. I think Tony Bennett does get talked enough as an offensive mind, you know, because the back line takes up so much oxygen. I mean, what they're doing really with that starting group this year, but they're, they've moved a little bit away from the mover blocker, more to this three-game concept, a lot more movement in each, more screening, more room to break off for drives. And interestingly enough, they have a better offensive efficiency this season than defensive efficiency. And to clarify, they've always been a very efficient offense as Franklin picks up the foul. <laughs> we welcome those of you who are watching UCF and USF. And Ishraf, Chris Patola, Wake Forest, and number 10, Virginia, at a rowdy and raucous Lawrence Joel Coliseum. The Demon Deacons 10-0 at home. They've beaten two ranked teams on this floor, including a win Tuesday against Clemson. Virginia rides in on a four-game win streak. Andrew Carr nearly traveled. And it looks like it'll stay with Wake Forest. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Neither team... Off to a great start. Wake a couple of turnovers early. Virginia 1 of 10, 0 for 5 from 3. Tyree Appleby inbounding. Hildreth trying to follow his shot, and it yeah. comes to Kihei Clark. You know, it's been a cold start, like you said, Anish, for both teams. I actually think they both have gotten good looks. The shots that Virginia's gotten on this end, their movement has been good. They've gotten open shots that they have not hit. And they're a, an open layup there, or at least a layup you should finish if you're Hildreth. The freshman, Isaac McNeely in there. Now Jaden Gardner. And Gardner knocks it down from mid-range. Gardner, a native of Wake Forest, North Carolina, which is not near here. It's near where you live, about <laughs> two hours east in the Raleigh area. Appleby against Kihei Clark, yeah. a matchup to watch. It's terrific. It's worth the price of admission. I, I thought another turnover by Wake. Clark coming off a 20-point game against Virginia Tech. Beekman looking for Caffaro out of bounds to Virginia. You know, I thought Kihei Clark went after Sean Padula in their game against Virginia Tech the other night. Took it personally. This is another one of those matchups between Appleby, a guy who's been one of the best players in this league, constantly on the attack against one of the best defensive guards in the country. McNeely catch and shoot, rebound Carr. Andrew Carr coming off back-to-back -back double doubles. We've seen a lot of this high pick and roll. It's a steady diet of this for round one for Wake. Carr blocked by Gardner, able to recover. And the one advantage Wake will have today is inside, especially if Virginia continues to play small. They've got Caffaro in there right now, 
but Wake has some big bodies down low. And I think that's why Tony Bennett went to Caffaro early. Guy who's only played nine minutes total in their last two games. Gardner over Carr. Offensive rebound, Beekman, new 20. Clark lines it up, and he cannot connect, and we get a foul down low. So the offensive glass has been an early storyline. Virginia has not shot it well, but they've taken far more shots early in this game than Wake has because of that offensive glass. You know, with this tempo and niche, there's going to be low possessions. I mean, that's how Virginia plays historically. Low possessions, when you can buy extra ones, foul line, offensive glass, off of turnovers, those are the cheap stuff in a low possession game. Clark again, and there's his first field goal. He was 0 for 3. Now six points away from passing Corey Alexander on Virginia's all-time points list. Hildreth down low, spin cycle, and able to draw the foul. He's so good as a guard with his physicality in the low post. And he's gotten so much better. I think the game has slowed down for him. You know, he's a driver, but he can also do that kind of Barkley move like he does there where he can get his back to the basket, back you down a little bit, and make a shot. He's not been great from the perimeter. Only 5 of 18 from 3 in conference play, but he's got a triple-double so far this year. He had 17 and 10 in that win over Clemson the other day. Just a really tough, hard-nosed dude. Right now, he's playing the best ball of his brief Wake Forest career. Sophomore from England, scoring up more than nine points per game from last year. Yeah, it sure is. You know, I thought the experience he and Matthew Marsh got last year, didn't play a ton of minutes in each, but it was a traditional progression. Learn as a freshman, get some minutes, make the most of it, and then when you become a sophomore, both those guys have been given their opportunity. You're talking about player development. What's that? <laughs> I, I don't know what that is anymore. I thought you'd just leave and go somewhere else. You know, there's that three-game concept we've been talking about. You know, Virginia going much more to that, especially when they go with that smaller lineup. As Caden Shedrick comes in now to replace Caffaro, a lot more movement, a lot more driving opportunities. I thought that the big thing against Virginia Tech for Virginia, they really drove the basketball. I think Tony Bennett leaning in offensively this year, and they have been uh, better certainly over the last few games on that end than they have all season. That last foul was on Hildreth. Shedrick lost his shoe, so playing with one sneaker. Clark, another three. It's good. He's got six. I love how he didn't have a sneaker, and yet they still threw it to him on the block. He said, go get one, big fella. And he was trying to balance while sliding on his uh, ankle socks or knee-high socks. You know, it's two threes in this game already for Kihei Clark. Look at him. No, no shoes, no service, no problem. Yeah, right out to Clark. Got pretty good traction with the socks there. You know, Clark had two threes in that game the other night. Again, I thought he took the Padula matchup personally. Like, he was going to go after him. Kihei Clark didn't have any threes in the three games prior. So, four threes in the last two games. We have seen him evolve as an offensive player in his five years. 39% from three this year for Clark. A career best. Appleby, that was tipped by Virginia. 12 to shoot. Carr gets rid of it quickly. Williamson now in there for Wake. Five to shoot. Appleby has to let it go. And that's why he's number two in the ACC in scoring. Especially late in the clock. I mean, you, you've got it. And it's tough because he could go right by you. I mean, he's just an outstanding offensive player with a tremendous amount of freedom from Steve Forbes. Franklin answers at the other end. You know, the other thing with Appleby that's so impressive, Anish, is he's really liked by his teammates. I mean, he's averaging over eight assists a game in conference play, which will make you like a guy. But the way he plays, you got to have teammates who like you because, again, he'll take some shots sometimes with that freedom that make you scratch your head. He'll drift turbines to the rim.
Clark. Over to Shedrick. Now McNeely, the freshman. Franklin lines it up. And smooth. He's playing with so much more confidence this year. He's playing his best in a Virginia uniform. There's no doubt about that. Bobby Clintman now looking for help. Appleby hounded by Clark, and he throws it away. Cam Hildreth, he is a strong driver. He's also a pretty good dancer, evidently. A little Fred Astaire. Virginia uniform over the last three weeks, and he knocks the three down there, Anish. But I, I think he's been more of a basketball player of late, not just a shooter. You know, came into Virginia with that reputation out of Indiana. I thought it put a lot of pressure on him last year to make shots. I think his mind is more free. Go back to their Carolina win. He had nine rebounds in that game, even though he was 0 for 5 from three. He's just, I think when he starts a game aggressive as a driver like he did against Virginia Tech, I think it's opening more things up for him. What impressed me, the way he bounced back, he had that game in December against Miami, scoreless 0 for 7 from the field. In the seven games since, he's averaging better than 15 points per, shooting 52% from the floor in those games. Last year, you saw extended dry spells that would carry over from game to game. There's Franklin again, and that one rattles in. And Wake showing a little bit of a defensive change zone out of the timeout. And a nice job by Franklin filling that corner. And then here, you know, we talked about the matchup on Appleby all day. Now you've got Reese Beekman, a little more length than Kihei Clark. Monsanto, quick release. And we get a foul on Carr. It's a nice weapon to have, Anish, in this league, you know, with the, the really good guard play we have to be able to have two guys in your backcourt like a Kihei and a Reese, Be Reese Beekman. Now you can throw the kitchen sink at Appleby, who has a chance to give Wake Forest back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year as they had... Alondis Williams last year, who came over as a transfer from Oklahoma. Appleby, a Florida transfer. McNeely, the three. And after a slow start, the shots starting to fall for Virginia. You made the point. They were getting good looks, missing them early. They're now starting to fall. We'll play host to Duke. The Blue Devils at home, knocking off number 17 Miami earlier today. Then at nine, number two Kansas headed to Waco to take on Baylor. You cover the Big 12 as well. That is a highly anticipated game. It's kind of become the marquee game in that league the last few years as Appleby misfires. Baylor's the hottest team in the Big 12. And if you haven't seen Keontae George, the stud freshman for Baylor, and obviously Grady Dick for Kansas. There's Franklin again. Oh, he's got it going. Seven straight made field goals for Virginia. Franklin's got 11. Now three of four from downtown. Monsanto working on Franklin. Williamson. No good. Rebound. Who else? Armand Franklin everywhere. Vanderplas back in there. Big size advantage. And Franklin finishes, and that's another element Vanderplas gives Virginia, the ability to pass as a big. And that's why he works at that four position. He's getting a matchup, and Wake was aggressive. Came with two and did not cover down on the backside. Franklin was wide open. And a very nice pass by Vanderplas. Eight straight made field goals for Virginia after getting off to a two for 14 start. Monsanto from 18. The rebound to Vanderplas. McNeely's made 15 of his last 26 from deep. And that is Beekman, and Virginia has now hit 7 of 13 from downtown, and it is 17 unanswered.
for the Cavaliers. And these are clean looks. I mean, he was allowed to just step into that and fire. Wake, not an, an overly aggressive defensive team in terms of extending. And Carr lost it on the way up. He was fouled. I mean, this has got to be better defended, especially after Virginia's made a few. Appleby is not only was he late, kind of half closed out. Than they have defensively. And I don't think Tony Bennett gets enough credit for the offensive coach he is. You know, a lot of movement this year. They've gone more to that three-game concept. He's found a lineup that works. He's got more shooting on his team. It's a very good passing team. They're one of the best teams in the country in assist rate. You've made the point. They don't turn it over. And so I think he has figured out, you know, it's a very versatile team. They score in a lot of ways. They know where their shots are coming from, but they can hit you in a lot of different areas. And even early in this game, when they started two out of 14, a lot of those were good looks. Virginia still hasn't turned the ball over. Appleby meets Clark, now Franklin. Clark thought about it. Shot clock down to four. Franklin. Shot clock at two. And Franklin can't get that one to go. It's knocked out of bounds. Last touch, Virginia. And then you add to their offense the ability to offensive rebound, which they have done early in this game. Their Vanderplas almost almost comes up with another one. Reese Beekman is on the bench. He picked up his second foul. So Clark guarding Appleby. Hildreth has been successful working inside a few times today. Carr, shot clock down to five. The double doesn't come, and he misses falling away, and the rebound is pulled down by the freshman Ryan Dunn. Six-foot-eight, wiry, three blocks and back-to-back -back games. A chance to be a real good one for Tony Bennett. Vanderplas posting up the smaller Appleby and able to draw the foul. Virginia, again, seeing the mismatch yeah. and exploiting it. And they've had that a few times. You know, Wake getting caught in some switches. They've had Vanderplas on Appleby a couple times and have not gone to him. There, just a nice, nice job positioning. Good toss over the top to get the foul. Fourth team foul against Wake. Franklin with 15 to lead all scores. He's got as many as the Deeks. That's what he's doing differently. That drive right there. And again, I think the offense facilitates that. There's more room for those types of drives. Appleby forced it. You got to be careful of your wake. A 16-point deficit against Virginia is not the same as if you're playing somebody else. Well, Wake has, has not proven they can stop Virginia yet. Uh, you could have set that to Mozart. The ball movement, and it's Franklin in the corner. 18 points for Franklin. He has outscored the Demon Deacons with five and a half to play in the first half. Hildreth over Franklin. And the drought continues. For Wake Forest, it has been a minute since their last field goal. Virginia on a 22 to one run over the last six minutes. Franklin from deep, short. And we'll get a foul down low. If it's on Vanderplas, that's his second and it is. It's an easy game when you share the basketball. I mean, this look at that one-handed pass out of the post. And around the horn, and there's Armand Franklin. And those are the possessions. I mean, Franklin's had a good first half, but those are the possessions that Virginia's starting to have where you don't really know who scores. You just know Virginia scored. What a textbook possession that was. And again, it's been the quality of shots. Sure has. And then conversely, Wake has, has not gotten good looks. Yeah, we're making a lot about this Virginia offense. Let's not forget they, they can still play a little defense. Well, they haven't lost that completely. Hildreth backing down Dunn. 
And able to draw the foul. You know, it's a wake team too, Anish, that has been really reliant on making threes. I mean, they're making over nine threes a game. They're shooting almost 40% from three in conference play. Kihei Clark just picked up his second foul. So foul trouble now something to watch. Clark has two, Beekman has two, and Vanderplas has two. Sunday on ABC, it's an ACC women's basketball matinee. Diamond to Johnson leading number 20 NC State against Haley Van Lip and Louisville coverage comes your way at 1 Eastern. Wake Forest has gone almost seven minutes since its last field goal. Virginia's made 11 of its last 13 from the field. Cavaliers 8 of 16 from deep. Clark, the savvy vet, in there with the two fouls, finds Gardner, and the rebound to Monsanto. Monsanto contested, able to knock it down, and... That ends the field goal drought, but it's those kind of shots for Wake. They're not really getting into their offense. Well, he could shoot right over Kihei Clark, who was on him, and Clark with the two fouls. You don't want to necessarily push up, but that's what Monsanto wants. He wants three. McNeely answers. Man. They are smoking hot, and it's a multitude of guys. I mean, that's where the versatility and the number of guys making shots for Virginia can be overwhelming. McNeely now 16 of his last 27 from three. Monsanto at the other end. He's a real microwave. You've got to do your work early with him. You have to play him before he catches the basketball. McNeely. Offensive rebound, Franklin. Clark. Back to Franklin, who's been hot. And a rebound by Monsanto. Monsanto thought about it. Tried to draw the foul. It was tipped. It'll stay with Wake Forest. Armand Franklin got a piece. Monsanto giving the Deeks a bit of a spark, but the deficit still 14. Look at the assist number, 12 to two for Virginia. Who's after a slow start, they made just two of their first 14. Since then, almost flawless basketball. Yeah, I think the big difference, Virginia's offense is working for them in the half court, whereas for Wake, it's been a lot of isolation, a lot of guys having to do their own thing. I think if you're Steve Forbes though, and maybe their defensive energy, Wake's defensive energy is down because they're not making shots on one end, but it starts with their defense. They have not been able to provide any resistance to this Virginia offense. Now Virginia's got 37. They're on pace for 80. And under Tony Bennett, when Virginia scores 80, they're 46 and one. Monsanto has been the offense for Wake. He's got 11, that's his first two point field goal. The lob and the finish, Jaden Gardner. And again, too easy for Virginia. A set play out of the timeout, well executed. Gardner got a screen from McNeely, a back screen, wide open. Monsanto, and that is his fourth three. And right now, he is single-handedly keeping Wake Forest in this game. Seventh game this season with four threes for Monsanto. He's got three games with six. Beekman back in there with the two fouls. Shot clock at seven. Franklin over Carr. Air ball. There is a window right now for Wake going into halftime. Yeah, a little bit of momentum here. It's a good point. You'd love this to be shrunk to single digits. And Appleby really has been a non-factor. 
in this first half. Monsanto camping out in the corner. He wants it. He's got it. Had to give it up. Shot clock into single digits. Hildreth posting up McNeely. Gardner coming over to help. Hildreth, the spin move inside. And able to draw the foul. That's that Barkley back down that he loves. He's, he's got a gritty, grindy game to him. And when he gets you in here, especially a matchup like McNeely on him, Virginia tried to bring the double with Gardner over the top. And a nice spin to the baseline there by, by Cam Hildreth. You know, he's from uh, Worthing, England. Do you know that uh, the actress who plays Brienne of Tarth, I don't know if you're a Game of Thrones guy. Wendelin Christie. She's from Worthing, England. How about that? Am I a Game of Thrones fan? I'm a uh, Game of Thrones nerd. <laughs> Clearly, you you're have that you're, actress. You're speaking my language now. Right off the tongue, Oh, man. yeah. I did not know that. So, Cam Hildreth and Brienne of Tarth. Kinfolk. Kinfolk. Wake within single digits. Virginia's largest lead was 19. Gardner looking for help. Franklin, baseline. And a putback there. That is Francisco Caffaro. Last year he was Caffaro. This year he says... Call me by my real name, Caffaro. And what a pass from Armand Franklin. Appleby driving on Beekman, who's got the two fouls. And the putback, Matthew Marsh. That's what he does. Sure is. He was on the spot, and thankfully he was, because that was really well defended on Appleby by Beekman. Virginia holding for one final shot. And Marsh commits the foul. a good foul. They're not at the limit. Make Virginia reset here. Only the fifth team foul, so Wake has one more to give. Franklin will inbound. Maybe in Williamson checks in for Wake Forest. And now Tony Bennett calls a timeout. 5.4 seconds to go. Franklin has been Virginia's top scorer. He's the game's top scorer. 18 points, four threes in the first half. And uh, what's been impressive, Virginia, 41 points, nine threes, zero, zero turnovers. And the balance has been outstanding. That's kind of what's defined this offense over the last handful of games here. Number of shot makers. The movement is really tough to guard. We talked about how good a passing team this Virginia group is. And really, you know, Wake gets back into this game because of the three-point shooting for Monsanto. The question for Wake at halftime is where are we going to generate offense Appleby, who came in averaging 18 a game, number two in the ACC, only five points on two of six. Hildreth, only one field goal. He's done most of his work from the free throw line. Five seconds to go. Beekman to Gardner. Nearly stolen away. Gardner's got to put it up, and he is fouled on the shot. So two shots coming. It is on Monsanto, his first. That's a bad foul by a redshirt junior. He should know better. You, you got to make Gardner make this shot. I mean, this is going to be a tough shot. Carr is there. You've got some length. He should be up closer. But for Monsanto to even be involved in that is unacceptable. 
Gardner comes up short. His number's down this season. His minutes are down. And part of that is the emergence of some of these other pieces for Virginia. Isaac McNeely, Ryan Dunn. One out of two. Williamson from half court. We had a little bit of a duel in that first half. Damari Monsanto hit four threes. Armani Franklin had four threes. Virginia on the road, up 10 at the break. Virginia matches its highest scoring first half of the season. 42 points for the Cavaliers. Wake trailed by as many as 19. They have cut that deficit to 10 at halftime, but Chris Patola, Virginia in that first half, 14 assists, yeah. zero turnovers. A bit of a cold start in the first four minutes, then they caught fire. It's about as, as efficient as you can be in the, in the back half of that half. This is an offensive Virginia team. We made that point early in this game. Seven different guys scored in that half for Virginia. They made nine threes, but it was the sharing of the basketball, the ball movement. You didn't really know who was scoring. You just knew Virginia was. 14 assists, no turnovers, nine threes. If you're Wake Forest, you've got to have much more pressure. There's got to be much more of a feel defensively. A lot of good looks and symphony-type ball movement for Virginia in the opening half. Wake, its largest second-half comeback this season. They trailed by six against App State, won that game on the Andrew Carr game winner, down 10 against the number 10 team in the country. But Wake, on this court, you expect a run. They're 10-0 at home, 28-2 at the Joel since the beginning of last season. And they've beaten two ranked teams here, knocking off Duke and Clemson on Tuesday. Virginia riding into this game on a four-game win streak. Vanderplas puts it on the floor against Carr. Appleby came over to help. Vanderplas off the feed from Clark. And another three. That is 10 now for the game for Virginia. That's the versatility. They started Vanderplas on the block. It was a broken play. He floats out to that three-point line. Such a tough matchup. How does Wake get Tyree Appleby going? Well, Virginia, credit them. We've talked about their offense. They did a nice job against Appleby. Put multiple guys on him. Were very aggressive in ball screens. He just didn't have a lot of, of movement, Anish. Hildreth down low and called for a travel. Now he's been working the low post, and Franklin did his best not to cede any ground, and that time Hildreth got caught. You know, clearly Virginia came into this, as you would expect. Tyree Appleby is not going to beat us, and then we're going to play those other guys off of him. And Tony Bennett told us before the game, we view it as us versus Appleby. Appleby has not scored since the 12 minute mark of the first half. He came into this game second in the ACC in scoring and that was just a I'm going to get mine drive right against Kihei Clark. Well, he's not averaging 18 in this league for no reason. And that's where he's got to start. You'd love to see him like that, Anish. Drive the basketball. Gardner, no good. Monsanto. He led Wake with 14 in the first half. Four threes. Appleby driving on Clark, and that's going to be three on Kihei Clark. And that's the other reason why driving gets good, especially in that matchup. You know, if you're Virginia or any team against Appleby, you can't get caught watching him dribble, especially in isolation, because he's a very willing passer to those other guys. One of the reasons he's averaging eight assists a game in conference play. It does not get easier for Appleby. Monsanto's three not there. Clark exits, and now you're going to have to deal with Reese Beekman. <laughs> You 
There's that Vander mismatch. Plus yep. has the mismatch against Appleby. They couldn't get it to him. Now they do. Shot clock at six, and Vanderplas stepped out of bounds. You know, it was interesting talking to Steve Forbes about Virginia. He mentioned Ben Vanderplas about four to different times in the conversation. He's been the real difference maker for Virginia over the last three games. He just committed Virginia's first turnover. And Vanderplas inserted into the starting lineup two games ago making his third straight start. It's the small lineup that's worked well. Monsanto beats the shot clock, his fifth three, and Wake Forest with an eight. You gotta keep riding that wave, because that's a tough shot, but it's what carried them in the first half. He's got 16 to lead the Deeks. Armand Franklin leads all scores with 18. Beekman hesitates. Now Gardner, baseline, short. A chance to make it a two-possession game. Appleby kicks to Hildreth. And the three! As Shooter in Hoosier said, you can't get caught watching the paint dry. You can't get caught watching Tyree Appleby operate because he's a very willing passer. Cam Hildreth, he's wet. And since Kihei Clark left the game with his third foul, Wake goes on a 7-0 run. If you're an opposing team, you feel much better playing Virginia when Clark is not in the game. And as, as an individual, if you're Tyree Appleby, as good a defender as Reese Beekman is, he's not Kihei Clark. Ke Kihei Clark is a dog. He's a foxhole guy. He's going to get into you. There's no back down. And I think Appleby senses that and senses how needed he is in this game. So you're, you'd rather be okay with going up against the length of Beekman? To be clear, <laughs> I don't want to play either of them. <laughs> but I feel much better when Clark is out of the game. McNeely in there for Virginia. Driving on Hildreth, lost it. And the crowd does not like the foul call. It's not really what McNeely does. It's, you know, if you're Steve Forbes, you're like, man, he puts it on the floor and we foul him. You send him to the foul line for two cheap free throws, a guy who is all threes. 77% of his shots from three. I like his nickname. They call him IMAC. <laughs> well, you're an Apple guy. In the NIL world now, that means something. Sure it does. The former Mr. Basketball in West Virginia hits the free throw. Beekman. Picks up Appleby, right on the logo. Appleby looking to shake Beekman. Good pass, Carr. Down low. And it rattles home for the Delaware transfer, Andrew Carr. He's been quiet, but he has been so good of late. Guy who was recruited to play behind Jake LaRavia sped up his process when LaRavia left. Hildreth the steal. Monsanto was calling for it. Hildreth didn't see him. And able to draw the foul. And momentum right now has shifted. The pendulum has swung to wake with 15.43 to go in the half. Big 12 challenge. Oh, my goodness. Back and forth we go. Boy, that is just perfect. There's no question. We got some ballers here. This is one of those chances to make a statement. It is not for the faint of heart. Got it. <laughs> we got a ball game. And he's Shroff, Chris Batola with you at the Joel. We got a ball game here. And foul trouble 
becoming an issue now for Virginia. Reese Beekman just picked up his third. Kihei Clark picked up his third earlier in this half. But he's got Clark back on the floor, so he's willing to play one of those guys with that foul trouble. And each, as you said, you'd love to see Appleby remain aggressive, particularly off the dribble. Appleby baseline. Dunn corrals the carom. They love that out of bounds play. They run that three, four times a game. Armand Franklin has not had many touches in the second half. Clark on the drive. Hildreth got a piece of the ball. Clark recovers. Shot clock did not reset. And done with the three, just his fourth of the season. His minutes are way up. He's played 40 minutes combined in their last two games coming in. I think Tony Bennett has found something with Ryan Dunn. Yeah, he's now in the circle of trust. ACC high, 25 minutes against Virginia Tech the other day. Carr drives and able to draw the foul. And Dunn still down underneath the Virginia basket. That's the versatility of Andrew Carr. He could play inside. He could play facing up. And I said a moment ago, he was recruited to play. Steve Forbes recruited him out of Delaware to play behind Jake LaRavia. And he was actually their best player over the summer. And Steve Forbes saying he leveled out a little bit in the fall. But with no LaRavia here, he kind of sped up his progression. And he's really coming on. He's got double doubles in their last two games. I think it was that Rutgers game in niche where even in that physical game, a game they lost, you could start to see Andrew Carr start to figure it out. Right, he was a big player here Tuesday night, 18 and 11, yeah. in the win against Clemson. Tigers came into the game 7 and 0 in the ACC. That was their first loss in conference. Both of these teams 6 and 2 in league play, tied for second. Vanderplas backing down Carr. Carr got a piece of it. Hildreth, strong drive. Ooh. Left hand. Shot clock down to nine. McNeely launches in and out, and Wake can make it a one-possession game. Appleby to the 10, and call for steps. That's the right call. Yeah, I mean, clearly a travel. It's about an eight-stepper. What was he grabbing, his wrist? Grabbing his wrist. Yeah, holding that left wrist. Not a Euro step, it's a, a Eurasian step. Two continents. Clark playing with the three fouls. Franklin with 18, none in the second half. Puts it on the floor, and he'll get two free throws. That's what he's been doing this season. Taking the ball to the basket more. When the three-point shot at times hasn't been there, he'll drive the ball, and he's become a more consistent player. And I think that's where the half-court offense, they are running, Anish, that three-game concept versus the mover blocker has opened up more of those drives. You know, they get the movement, they get the screening, and then Clark, Beekman, Franklin can, can break that off and get into that drive to the basket. Virginia Notre Dame women's basketball tomorrow 2 p.m. over on the ACC Network. A chance to watch a little more hoops before getting your Sunday football fix. This is a pretty nice appetizer before some playoff football. It's as good a crowd I've seen at Wake Forest in a long time. Yeah, Steve Forbes has re-energized this fan base. 
re-energized the Joel. McNeely, the block on Hildreth. You think about where this program had been for a decade plus, you know, in purgatory or worse in the ACC. Steve Forbes takes over a couple of years ago. They show some progress last year, 13 and five in league play. And you know, if not for maybe a better non-conference schedule or a few more non-conference wins, uh, they would have been right there in the NCAA tournament. It's not often teams go 13 and five in the ACC and miss out on the dance. Yeah. Well, and, and for Steve Forbes, if you're trying to beef up your non-conference schedule, you're also doing it under the... You don't know who your roster's going to be. So I think, you know, he goes out, he schedules Rutgers. They got a really nice win at Wisconsin. You know, that two-point loss to LSU, you wonder if that comes back to haunt them a little bit. But you're assuming, if you're Forbes, that Jake LaRavia is coming back. And then LaRavia is too good. He ends up being a first-round pick. But it's becoming harder and harder to schedule, not only with transfers and whatnot and the movement... But also, how, who's going to be good? How do we determine who's going to help our analytics? His background as a junior college coach, where you're piecing together a roster year in, year out, season by season, it's helped him. And you've seen what he's done with an Appleby, with an Alondis Williams, a LaRavia. McNeely knocks down the three. He's becoming a dead-eye shooter. Now three of five from downtown. Better than 50% over his last six-plus games. Appleby whistled for the offensive foul. You cannot, on that, that, that shot before my McNeely, you have got to know personnel. You cannot help if you're Damian Williamson. That one step he takes towards the basketball allows a three-point shooter, a guy who only shoots threes and who has been on a heater over the last handful of games, that is overhelp and it's a bad defensive play. Clark, and that is sent back by Matthew Marsh. Surprisingly, only his third block of the season. That is surprising. You know, a guy who only played 79 minutes all season last year. Another one of those sophomores who has stepped into a lot more minutes. And he's done a nice job this year. Uh, he's worked a lot with a strength and conditioning coach. Gotten stronger, gotten bigger, gotten faster. Imagine the pickup games with he and his brothers. They're all about the same height. <laughs> Pickup games uh, about fighting, wrestling. Turns into a rugby match. Reese Beekman picks up the foul, and that is four now on one of the premier perimeter defenders in the country. So Beekman's got four. Kihei Clark has three. Now it'll be Clark on Appleby. Seven-point lead for Virginia. They've led by as many as 19. Appleby looking to shake Clark, driving against Dunn. And a foul on the floor before the shot. It's on Dunn, his second. And Steve Forbes thought it should have been a shooting foul. That's already six team fouls now for Virginia, so Wake in the bonus from here on out. Twelve oh six to go, second half. Virginia's halftime lead was 10. Appleby over Clark. And it's Kihei pushing for Virginia. A fifth-year senior. A turnover for Virginia, just their third of the game. Different vibe inside the Joel here in the second half. The round of 16 in Melbourne underway. Australian Open coverage begins tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN+. 
coverage begins on ESPN2 at 8 o'clock. And you can watch Coco at 9 p.m. tonight. Wake's guards this afternoon, Appleby and Hildreth, have drawn 10 fouls combined. And you start to say, what's changed this game? Well, it started with foul trouble for Beekman and Kihei Clark. Yeah, it's a good point. You know, go back to that Clemson game. Appleby drew nine fouls in that game, took 14 free throws. Beekman on the bench with four fouls. Clark has three. Appleby goes right at him, flips it, reverses it, but didn't get ripped. I mean, that's a perfect setup out of the timeout. You're isolated on that right wing to try and get a foul on Clark. You gotta have a stronger finish look there if you're Appleby. Appleby, three out of 10. Franklin for three. Rebound Carr. Monsanto straight away. In and out. This place would have erupted if that would have gone in. Monsanto four threes tonight. Gardner down low. Franklin got his man in the air and then missed the bunny. Missed layups. Appleby going to work on Clark. Spin cycle inside. Got him. And draws the foul. It's, it's going to be tough for Kihei Clark because they're just going isolation now. And he's got a ton of space and the freedom to go and, and the freedom to go to work. It's just tough. He's too shifty. He reminds me, and I, I mean this in a very poor man's form, he reminds me a lot of Allen Iverson. He's got that slight body frame. He throws his body around. Incredible freedom, very shifty, can make tough shots. And he's got Iverson vibes. It's going to be hard for Kihei Clark, particularly in foul trouble, Anish, to stay in front of that. Yeah, four on Clark, four on Beekman. Appleby, the 24-year-old Florida transfer. He began his career at Cleveland State. Named a few days ago to the midseason Oscar Robertson Award watch list. And he can score. He has been a double-figure scorer in all five of his collegiate seasons that he's played in. Virginia's lead down to five. Franklin in the low post. Gardner with eight to shoot. And a kick ball. Andrew Carr. And that resets the shot clock to 20. Again, trying to run Appleby down to the block. Appleby switched on to Vanderplas. Just can't make a post pass. And a foul before the inbounds. It's on Hildreth, his second. McNeely a three, short. Appleby driving on McNeely. Kicks to Monsanto, the quick release. Not there, Franklin the rebound. That's the ball watching I'm talking about. You gotta stay home on Monsanto. You can't watch Appleby drive and dribble. McNeely, open, drives, floater, too strong. Here comes Monsanto. Hildreth, kicks nice. it back to Trailer Clinton. Plus the three quiets the crowd. It's a big shot from a guy who has hit some big shots in their last few games. What a weapon Vanderplas has become. Appleby, Monsanto at the other end. Yes. Tyree 
Appleby occupies attention to the defense on the opposite side. Bobby Clifton runs the floor. And a little Fluskies. Fluskies potatoes. Wet for Monsanto. We got a three-point game, Anish. Virginia led by 19 with 5.42 to go in the first half. Wake Forest has cut the lead all the way down to three. And we made this point earlier, Chris. Being down 19 against Virginia feels different because they can suffocate you by grinding the clock, playing slow. And that's almost a 30-point deficit or a 25-point deficit against anybody else. The fact that Wake is close to within three tells you how good this team is on this floor. Vanderplas inside against Hildreth. And Wake can tie with a three. Appleby, and that is a block on McNeely. His second foul. Wake in the bonus, so a one and one for Tyree Appleby, an 82% free throw shooter. It's hard to quantify what Virginia has lost with Clark and Beekman in foul trouble. Defensively, it starts there, but secondarily, offensively, those two guys calm this team down. Certainly, Kihei Clark. He drives this engine. To not have those two guys is a massive deal here for Virginia. Be interesting to see, Anish, how long Tony Bennett waits. I was going to ask you at some point, do you put one of the two in just to neutralize Appleby? I think the closer you get to that four-minute TV timeout, I think you'll start to see. You know, I think you'll sprinkle those guys back in and then trust that they won't foul. A one-point game. The closest it's been since 15-14. Appleby the other way for three for the lead and going the other way it's a foul against Wake Forest and Marsh I don't mind the shot from Appleby it's shots he's taken all year and as I like to say if you're okay with a guy taking a shot and making it you have to be okay with Tyree Appleby taking that shot and missing it it's a momentum shot those are those Iverson vibes I'm talking about. You're going to have to live with some tough ones. Wake has beaten two ranked teams at home. 10-0 at the Joel. Franklin, open three. He's been quiet in this second half. Only one point. He had 18 in the first 20 minutes. Appleby driving on Dunn. Ooh. Blocked by Dunn. Dunn's at three blocks in back-to-back -back games. And then they get Bobby Clipman, the freshman from Sweden, with the reach in. You know, when you're a big guy, you can meet somebody at the rim. You might get beat. Meet him at the rim. She is on Tyree Appleby. What that means is you might get beat. But if you stay with the play, you can meet him at the backboard. That's a big-time block on an outstanding offensive player by the freshman Ryan Dunn. Yeah, he is going to be a good one for Virginia. Older brother Justin played baseball in the ACC. First-round pick is a pitcher out of Boston College. Now with the Cincinnati Reds. Virginia with the lead. And Beekman and Clark back in the game with seven and a half to go, both playing with four fouls. Beekman baseline drive, bumped, no foul, off of Monsanto, nine to shoot. What do you tell the player when they come in with four fouls with this much time left? Well, hopefully you don't have to tell these veterans too much, Anish. Just got to stay in a stance, try to stay in front, and in a pinch, don't commit the foul. Franklin. And if you're awake, if you're awake, you are going right after. Appleby wanted to, picked up his dribble. Franklin picks up Hildreth. 
15 for Hildreth. Appleby with 11. Goes right to work on Clark. Good help. Shot clock down to eight. Hildreth posting up Franklin. Feed to the corner. Carr the three. That would have been for the lead. And it's snatched by Dunn. And you made this point earlier. Tony Bennett telling us it's us against Tyree Appleby. All those other guys have to be aware of the foul trouble Clark and Beekman are in. Beekman. And we'll get Carr with a foul. So Virginia to the line, a one and one. Who's now in the bonus? And that's the matchup. You know, that's two drives that Beekman takes on Carr. I actually thought he got fouled on the baseline on the last possession, but they pick it up there. You know, that's the game of matchups we knew coming in in each. Wake Forest much bigger up front when Virginia has this lineup in. Best crowd of the season at home for Wake Forest. And they woke up from their slumber really late in that first half when Wake went on a bit of a run. Appleby in the paint, teardrop, not there. Now that's a gimme. You're getting what you want. I mean, that is on the doorstep. And they fell asleep defensively. Franklin, the easy flush. And a timeout by Steve Forbes. You had a chance at one end and then a breakdown at the other if you're Steve Forbes. Well, there's nothing you can do if you're Steve Forbes. You drew up the play you wanted. I mean, he got right on the doorstep. And then here, just a breakdown in your, your transition defense and a nice job by Franklin. You've seen a couple of those types of cuts from the weak side. It's good to get a dunk, see if that maybe gets him going. He was so good in that first half, particularly from three. In the second half, Virginia shooting just 25%. They didn't turn it over in the first 20 minutes. They've had four here. Franklin, with that dunk, has 21. His fifth 20-point game this season. Eighth as a Cavalier. Six oh one to go. What does this game come down to? comes down to who's able to execute in the half court Anish I mean it's you know again it's Tyree Appleby the damage he's able to cause and it's not necessarily his bucket but what he's creating for others Appleby just won for his last nine from the field but he does have five assists he leads the ACC in that category Carr Backing down the freshman, Dunn swoops in, batted up at the long arms, the great wingspan of Brian Dunn coming away with the ball. You can see why Tony Bennett likes him in there. He's long, plays with a really good motor, good athlete. Beekman driving on Carr, kicks to the corner, Dunn for three, line drive comes right back to him. And he's called for the offensive foul. That's three on Dunn. Yeah, it's a good call. You're just trying to do too much. You know, nice job following up his shot. And then a good heads-up defensive play by Andrew Carr. Wake and Virginia entered the day tied for second in the ACC, along with Miami and Pittsburgh. Miami lost to Duke earlier today. Clemson at 7-1, leading the conference. Carr against Dunn, and he traveled. And that's Dunn. I mean, he is just Andrew Carr all sped up and you know, collapsing folding chair there.
Clark from the corner. Puts it on the floor. Drops it off. Franklin through Trevlin. And Dudley emphatic putback. Wake closed to within one. A 6-0 Virginia run. Appleby against Clark. And not much Kihei could do with the four fouls. Well, you got to make a decision if you're Tony Bennett, because that was well defended by a guy with four fouls. Are you going to bring help? Are you going to have guys come over to help on that drive? 13 now for Tyree Appleby. Beekman works the baseline. Almost a three-second shot clock at two. Clark lets it fly and fouled on the three-point shot by Appleby. We'll have to see this one. Yeah, that's a foul. There's no question that's a foul. He hits him on the elbow. And if you're an official standing right there, which is where the official was, he's going to call that. It's not a smart play by Tyree Appleby. That is not a shot that Kihei Clark is hitting at a high percentage. And this game has a chance to go to eight points if he bangs down all three of these free throws. That is a massive foul in this game. Kihei Clark, a 74% free throw shooter. Winningest player in school history. Making his 126th career start today. And he misses the first. Seven starts away from tying London Parentes' school record. Chasing down John Crotty on the all-time assists list as well. And with that free throw, he's got eight points in the game. And is now tied with Corey Alexander, our colleague, on Virginia's all-time scoring list. Seven-point lead for the Cavaliers. Beekman marking Monsanto. Skip pass. Appleby brings it down. Shoots over Clark. Marsh had the rebound and lost it. And a foul is called down low. That was a good defensive possession by Virginia. First of all, you made Wake take some time, and they have done an exceptional job with that high ball screen today, Anish, where, you know, Appleby and that middle third of the floor, you get that rim run all the time by Matthew Marsh or Andrew Carr, and it usually results in a dunk. Virginia's done a nice job with that today. Four fouls now on Dunn. Marsh, a 41% free throw shooter. Just 13 of 32 prior to that. And he gets them both. So Dunn, Kihei Clark, and Beekman all with four fouls and all on the floor. Beekman oh. inside to Vanderplas, and it's an offensive foul. Appleby sold it. Vanderplas picks up his third. They've had that a lot today, that mismatch. Vanderplas at 235 pounds. Jeez, just discards the 175 pound Tyree Appleby. Virginia with one timeout. Wake has two. Three minutes to go. At one point, it looked like a Virginia runaway. And now an offensive foul on Marsh. Now the officials have taken control of this game, whether you like it or not. I, I was not a fan of this call, at least live. I mean, he's just trying to... 
to me, that's not a moving block. He's actually trying to get out of the way of Kihei Clark, but I guess the officials saw him as trying to set a screen while moving. Appleby shading Clark. Beekman from deep. Wow. The three is there. Big shot. And a shot it didn't seem like he wanted to take, but he's actually shooting a very high percentage from three this year. 48%. Monsanto forced it. And that's that's not a good shot. And that's a Damari Monsanto kind of shot. He'll shoot you into a game, but he could take some bad ones in some big spots. Awake has missed seven of its last eight. Beekman putting it on the floor. Could not maneuver around Carr. We come up on two minutes to play. Beekman step back, long two, air ball. Hildreth working on Franklin. And they get Franklin with the foul. Two shots now for Cam Hildreth, who is eight for eight at the free throw line and the stripe has been a big advantage today for wake it has it's really been a massive part of their offense you know it was monsanto in the first half and then really just driving it and getting to the foul line in this second half for wake Big Monday, Duke and Virginia Tech. Blue Devils coming off a win today against Miami at Cameron Indoor. Virginia Tech, one and six in league play, but much better than their record indicates. And they've got Hunter Couture back. Kansas Baylor, the nightcap at nine. One out of two for Hildreth. And now here's where Virginia's dangerous. They yeah. practice their offense with the shot clock winding down so this is nothing new and you've got to get a stop here because you can't you can't play these out much longer with three to shoot franklin gets the roll to kill him you know you didn't have to foul there yet but you had to get a stop and the lead now back to 10 that's what the margin was at halftime monsanto from the corner his sixth three of the game Fourth game with six or more threes. Hildreth the steal. Wake still alive. Monsanto again. Hits! A career high 25 for Damari Monsanto. Seven threes. And Wake pulls to within four. It's the many moves of Damari Monsanto. He is a wild card, emphasis on wild. He takes some shots that if you're Steve Forbes, you have to live with, because he can do this. That's a big time shot. He's got tremendous positional size, about 6'6", six, six, and he has started to hit that shot off the bounce. And how about a turnover in each? A team that rarely does that, especially that guy, Kihei Clark, a big turnover at center court, leading to another transition three. Virginia led by as many as 19 looking to hold on this would be a big road win for the Hoos who are trying to make it five in a row Wake has not lost on its home floor this season the Demon Deacons have beaten two ranked teams and if they come back and somehow win this game after being down 19 to Virginia yeah. uh, that says a lot about where this team is headed when they were just down 10 with about a minute 20 to Virginia. And still two threes, obviously six points, put you right back in this game to the extent that you don't have to foul here. Like, play this out, trust your defense. I think you could afford to be aggressive. But again, you've got to get a stop and a defensive rebound. Virginia will inbound. They can run the baseline. Vanderplas to inbound. Dunn, Franklin, Clark, and Beekman on the floor for the Cavaliers. Appleby, Hildreth, Carr, Monsanto, 
And Clintman for Wake. It'll stay with Virginia, knocked out by Wake. Beekman, Dunn, and Clark all have four fouls. Clark clears to Beekman. And now we get a foul, it's Hildreth. Two you know, shots. They, you know, clearly, obviously, Steve Forbes wanted them fouling there. You know, they had taken, by the time Virginia got it over, it was about 20 seconds on the shot clock. I, I'm, I'm in favor of playing that thing out. Trust your defense. Get your stop. Again, he makes both of these, and, and now you're at a differential with 41 left here. Virginia has hit the 70-point threshold. 9-0 this season when scoring at least 70. Clark with that last free throw just passed Corey on the all-time scoring list. You've really hit that home uh, today. We're going to get that in. I'll hear it from him when I see him. Both free throws good. 73-67. Still a two-possession game. Monsanto trailing the play. Appleby down the lane against Franklin, missing the layup. And now you got a got foul, <laughs> and they finally do. So Kihei Clark to go to the line with a chance to ice this game. Yeah, I think if you're Tyree Appleby after this game, there's been a few of those bunnies around the rim, Anish. Too many today. Too many. In a game like this against a team like Virginia where your margin for error is very thin, you have got to make those layups around the rim. Appleby just four out of 16. He came into the game as the ACC's number two scorer. And, you know, you can't say enough about what the experience has meant for Virginia. Yes, you've got young guys like McNeely and Dunn making big plays, but Clark and Beekman, the ability to come back with four fouls to stay on the floor, that's been the difference. And how about the head coach trusting those guys? I mean, he put them in. I thought it was going to be closer to that four-minute timeout. He put them back in right under eight minutes. And that's a, that's a head coach who's been in a lot of wars, certainly with Kihei Clark and Reese Beekman. He trusts those guys. And to do that, particularly with Clark on Tyree Appleby, that was a heck of a job here by Kihei Clark. Virginia returns to action next Saturday. Boston College comes to JPJ. That game on the ACC Network. Wake goes to Pittsburgh on Wednesday. A Pitt team that is far more dangerous than anybody thought going into the season. Monsanto tries another three. It's not there. Batted out to Hildreth. Monsanto again. Franklin pulls it down. That's all she wrote. Virginia hands Wake its first home loss of the season. The Cavaliers make it five in a row. We talked a lot about Virginia's offense yep. and the identity of this team taking shape. We saw that again. They went to the smaller lineup, even with foul trouble to their guards. This offense gave this Virginia team a cushion in the first half. This is an offensive team this year. Get used to it, folks. They're fun to watch on that end. They had 42 points in the first half, 76 in this game. That's the story. And Tony Bennett picks up his 400th career win. For Chris Patola and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Anish Shroff. Final score from Winston-Salem, Virginia 76, Wake Forest 67. Who's, who's being put on headset? <laughs>